My name is Megan and I'm from Ontario, Canada. This is my 1985 GMC Fire Command van, hailing from Montreal. So I bought the van on Kijiji, um, similar to Craigslist, and I bought it from a fella who actually had it gifted uh, to him by um, a man who got it in auction. They had like kind of the same intention of t uh, turning it into like a camper style uh, thing. And I got really lucky. Um, I found it for a really affordable price. It was 2000 bucks. It's in really good condition because it was kept inside most of its life um, at the fire hall. It was used as um, uh, basically a vehicle to help power the jaws of life. So it had a lot of generators in it and electrical panels and stuff like that. And I pulled it all out. <laughs> This is my little home on wheels. <laughs> I did the build completely myself. I had a lot of verbal guidance from my dad. I tried to keep it as like minimally budgeted as possible. I didn't actually intend to buy a step van. So when I got it, I had a lot more square footage uh, to work with than I was expecting. I knew for sure there were certain things that I wanted. Like I wanted uh, my cat's kitty litter separate from my living space. So I did, did put a garage in the back for that purpose. Also, I wanted my daughter to be able to have like a space of her own that she could go to. So this is actually her bedroom, um, but there's no mattress or anything down there right now because she's been camping out at a tent with some other kids she's met on the road. I wanted this space to feel as open as possible. We like to have dance parties, so <laughs> I wanted to be able to like, you know, move around and stuff with my daughter. Um, she's 10 and we're full time on the road, so. That was really important to me to have lots of space to like walk about to the cabin. Yeah, she really likes it. I've have seen a huge confidence boost in her in the last several months, which has been really interesting. Well, when she was in school and stuff, she would have like, you know, really odd days. So some days she'd come home from school and she would be, you know, in a really sad mood or a really upset mood, angry. Like every day was totally different. It was kind of a roller coaster of emotions with her picking her up from school. And I have noticed that in van lifing, we don't have any bad days. It's like she's usually always in a really good mood and super positive about things and excited for like what the next day brings. And so that's been definitely a huge confidence boost for her, like that happiness each day. I actually have intentions of putting like an L-shaped bench here when I go home next summer. Some of the build stuff I'm not completely finished with. I haven't trimmed out my windows yet. For now, this has been like an arts and crafts space for Molly. Uh, so this table um, actually lifts up here. Oops. <laughs> when there's not stuff in front of it, um, it lifts up and uh, it just moves over. And we've also had some people leaving us really nice travel and love notes along the way, which has been great. I wanted a place to hang our coats and stuff when we came in, um, as well as like hats and mittens and everything. So this kind of just ended up being almost like the mudroom area when we when we enter. But one thing that I'm lacking right now is a seating area for dinner and stuff. So that will definitely happen next summer when I'm home. We do sit here. Um, actually, I have these benches underneath the kitchen counter and I just pulled these out. And then that way we have somewhere we can sit. So we will sit here sometimes and eat or We'll sit on the wheel wells sometimes, just like side by side. Outside, we spend a lot of time outside. <laughs> Molly's very artsy, so she uh, really likes having the table because she does crafts there a lot. Oh yeah, no, she's got two storage bins full of craft stuff, uh, tons of paint things, um, and she's like really, she loves finding like recyclable stuff and turning it into like art and things like that. Like she takes people's junk and makes it into a treasure, which is a really cool trait. I hope she does something with, with that through her life for sure. So this actually is hemlock and my dad cut this for me. Um, he bought a mill and this was actually the first piece of wood that he cut with his new mill. Uh, so it's actually pretty sentimental to me as well. He cut the wood and put it all together for me and then I finished it uh, and it turned out really, really good. Um, I wanted a lot of countertop space. I'm a mom, so I'm always like cooking and preparing things and um, it was important to me to have like a really functional kitchen sink and um, lots of space to cook on and do things. Uh, in here, like I have my pots and pans covered um, and a magnet inside to hold my knives and stuff, which is pretty handy. We're definitely minimalists. I have things that I need and every, sing every single thing in this place gets used on a regular basis, which is great. No thing goes untouched. <laughs> And then um, in this cupboard here, I have my water system. So we don't have any major holding tanks on the vehicle. Uh, I just have like a four jug uh, 
system and it works really functionally. I have 15 gallons of fresh drinking water and I have a five gallon gray water tank and it's worked really well. I can actually be off grid for about seven days with Molly and I um, before I'm concerned about water. So that's been great. And we have our garbage in there. Um, I made sure that I used all this space. So I have these baskets up screwed into the cupboard as well that are holding like my dishcloths and soap and all of that. The sink I love, um, they were both really affordable as well. This is from Amazon and this is from Ikea. I think the entire setup cost me about 75 bucks and it's definitely functional. When we're driving, I usually take anything that's hanging and put it in the sink so it's kind of multi-purpose as well. It's been great. I don't have a hot water heater and I don't find that a downfall at all. Uh, I've not had any issues. If I want warm water for dishes, I'll just heat a kettle or something. I mean, maybe down the road. We don't have a shower or anything. We do public showers, so it's been good. We wash our hair in it though, from time to time. <laughs> yeah. None of these windows were actually in the van when I bought it. So I, these are RV windows that I got for $50 a piece uh, from an RV scrapyard and I installed the windows. They're really great. I love this three-tiered window. It uh, lets lots of air in and it's really bright and I always have a super great view when we park, which I love. One thing that I knew that I also wanted <laughs> when I did my van build was I love looking out a window when I'm doing the dishes and when I'm cooking. So that was like, important to me that the window was at like really good view height um, and everything when I did it. So I have a pull-out cooktop and this is all I use. It's super, it does, does the job. It's just a butane cooktop. I can only do one pan cooking, but I haven't really found that an issue at all. Uh, and I just stow it away when we're not using it because countertops like serious real estate and being able to put my cook my cooktop away is uh, really nice. So this actually is kitchen storage. I have all of my kitchen stuff in here, plates and everything, spices, tea, this handy little tea organizer, I'm a big tea drinker. This cupboard here um, is actually my closet. <laughs> it's very little. <laughs> I had a lot of clothes, so downsizing clothes was like a thing that I struggled with, but I think I did a pretty good job. Um, oh, there we go. That's a van thing. Um, so yeah, I have all my clothes in there um, and it functions. I also have a couple storage bins in the garage um, that we just keep like warmer, heavier sweaters in and stuff for colder climates. Just have like random, like an electrical box. And then I have a box um, that holds all of my fire stuff for my wood stove. This is my handsome cat, <laughs> Mozart. We have two cats on the road with us. Put them in the van two weeks before we left so that they could kind of like get a feel for it. And it really surprised me. They have not cried or put up a fuss or anything. Mozart actually is so confident now he drive, he'll sit on the dash when I'm driving. And Monet likes to hang out on the doghouse when I'm driving <laughs> as well, which is cool. The cat likes to hang out on the doghouse, go figure. <laughs> So this is my bed and uh, it's really great because Molly has her own room and I have my own space. I've also got an epic view with the window that I put in over here, which I love having tea and like coffee and stuff like that, reading a book and sitting here with the views really nice. But I have USB ports down here too, so I can charge my phone and everything like that if I need to. And that's really handy. That all runs off of the solar system. So I have a 300 watt panel charging a 150 amp hour AGM battery and it's, I have a 500 watt inverter as well. And our needs are pretty minimal. Like we're just charging basically our cell phones, uh, laptops, and I have a solar fridge, 12 volt fan. I've got a water pump for my kitchen sink. Um, and then some USB ports, uh, basically to help charge the smaller electrical stuffs like fans and things like that. And I've not had any issues with it. It's been like that amount has been perfect for us. Everyone's needs are so different. Um, but I really like, I calculated out, um, exactly what I thought I would need. Um, and it was a good thing I did, I did cause it's been perfect. We've been on the road for four months now. Um, and I haven't had any issues with it yet since leaving. I'm never really concerned. It's always at a really good charge. Um, it's been really functional for us. You'll notice there's only one seat in this van. <laughs> uh, I have a seat belt actually back here behind 
all of these pillows because I have a pillow obsession. Um, there's a seatbelt back there so that when I am driving, Molly has an option to buckle up if she needs to. Um, and some states and some provinces have different laws, but she doesn't have to be buckled at all times. But if I'm on major highways, I usually have her buckle up. Um, and next summer, I'm hoping to install a second seat for her up front. Other than that, um, it's probably my favorite nook <laughs> in the van. I, I definitely like made a a cozy little nook back here for us to sleep on. It gave us lots of space, um, which is good. It kept this very open. I have a garage in the back. Um, I built a wall and then uh, the whole van actually I framed and strapped with two by two. And then I did a, a one and a half inch layer of spray foam insulation. And then these pallets actually I got um, uh, second hand. I was like, I think I got 20 pallets for $40 um, and I ripped them all apart. Molly actually sanded and painted them all. Um, she helped me do all of them. She did a really good job uh, and she learned a lot too. And I was able to do the whole ceiling and the back wall for like $40. Real pallet and because it's wood too, it stays super dry, which is great. Um, it's really dry in here. I haven't had any moisture issues so far. Knock on wood, there's a lot in here. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been, it's been really, really great and the, the garage is awesome because I didn't realize um, how much stuff that I had that I wouldn't have wanted in my personal space until I started moving it all in and so I'm really thankful that I have the garage it's not a very big space it's only about like a foot and a half uh, but it definitely provides a really good storage area for us which has been super helpful so the curtains are handmade uh, Molly and my grandma actually made them together almost everything in the van I tried to either repurpose things or do myself like um, or have Molly do she's a really good sewer so I don't know how to sew but my daughter knows how to sew <laughs> which is super cool <laughs> so I'll make her do all the sewing <laughs> these are my fairy lights and they run basically around the perimeter of the van they're also dimmable which is awesome uh, because when Molly's asleep at night if I want it to be like a little bit darker in here uh, she can sleep better there's also a party setting which is pretty great if they'll go maybe they'll go oh no they won't go but they strobe <laughs> They do strobe, which is funny, so that's helpful for our dance parties. And uh, this is Molly's closet, um, and it's a mess because she's 10, so we just won't even bother opening that one. <laughs> um, and then we have, um, this is our Grizzly Cubic Mini Wood Stove, and I do really, really like it. I actually put these on for when we're driving, um, and it just helps these to not rattle, and this one as well. I have the the wall mount and everything like that, uh, which has been really great. Uh, my stoke time is a little bit more frequent. It's about two to three hours I have to keep stoking it, and I think that's because my flu is uh, shorter than what most people are going with. I think it might be an air thing, but it keeps it so dry and cozy in here, and it's a really like romantic type of heating and um, so it's nice to like you know be curled up especially when you're in colder climates um, with a wood stove going and it smells nice too I'm definitely happy that I went with it and they're a great company based out of the west coast of Canada actually I tried to get as much stuff within Canada as I could uh, my solar fridge is also from Canada it's a company called unique off-grid and I love it uh, it's really um, it's got lots of ample storage in it. It only draws five amp hours in a 24-hour cycle So it barely even kisses my solar system. It's got a little freezer inside, which is awesome um, So you can have ice in the desert. That's a big deal for some people. <laughs> I collect magnets. Molly collects buttons So uh, we've been kind of getting them on the road as we go and see different places and do different things So this area here actually has a future purpose. Um, we were running from Canadian winter when we left four months ago so uh, this is actually our future bathroom uh, we currently were uh, on the market for a composting toilet but we currently just have like a temporary camper potty under here and it's been okay so far on the road I mean I wouldn't want it for like long term but uh, it's been it's been all right and then uh, I just have a little basket in there with our laundry so my plan for this area is to build a little partition wall right here so that when you're sitting on the toilet you have a little bit more privacy from the front and I'm gonna cut this back and place it on a piano hinge so that this actually lifts and clips and there will be a mirror underneath so it's like a vanity area with some storage it's functional for now and it got us away from the snow so <laughs> I'm all right with it and then in this cupboard it's all of our bathroom stuff uh, I have it pretty well organized but um, 
I'm hoping to put all of this stuff in the cupboard that'll be down below so that I'll have another storage area for kitchen stuff, which I think will be a lot better. Molly's homeschooled. So um, in here I have like a lot of her school books, the things she likes to read and stuff like that, and like a map and stuff because she's been learning a lot of geography <laughs> on the road. And then we have our, our solar system area, which I'm planning on boxing in. Again, I wasn't able to totally finish before we left. It's been pretty great. I have my battery um, strapped in here. I actually had a friend um, help me install the solar system. It really intimidated me. It was the one thing about, um, about the build that kind of concerned me a little bit. I was worried I'd wire it wrong. I knew nothing about electrics. Heard horror stories about people having fires and I was like, oh no, <laughs> I wouldn't want that. And uh, yeah, I have a little storage bin here. Um, just keep our shoes in it and stuff like that. This is the cat's basket. They like to hang out in there. They're pretty lucky. I mean, they live a hard life, as you can see. They look a little pampered. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a skylight that I put in. Um, this metal actually was already here, and the fiberglass body was across it. But it was really dark, and you couldn't see through it. Um, and I actually, I really love the thought of having a lot of light. As you can see, I put in a lot of windows. Like, I'm really all about bright and airy. I decided to cut this out and put a piece of plexiglass here and it's been awesome when it rains it's so pretty um, you can see the stars through it at night it lets in lots of natural light during the day and Molly creatively made this wonderful thing um, because it does let a lot of heat out when I'm heating the space also the sun when it's coming through can be super hot so this is just a piece of insulator board and um, Molly put some really pretty fabric on it and I have these little things here and it goes up, um, darkens the space. Also for city dwelling, it's like daytime in here when you're under a street light. <laughs> so this has been awesome because it's kept all the light out when we're um, dwelling in cities or anything like that. Um, it's been really cool. I like it a lot. It's one of my most favorite parts of the van actually. So I'll move this fluffy squishy thing here. So this is the front cab. This is also another thing that I plan on doing a lot more work with uh, when I go home next summer. I'm going to be completely gutting the dash and putting a live edge wood dash in. Um, I'm hoping to actually use a product called lizard skin in here. They use it on hot rods in really hot uh, countries and climates and it's like a really thick um, skin you put on about five millimeters thick and it's uh, basically like a insulator paint. Um, it insulates spaces and um, it's really helpful. I put it on the inside of my doghouse and uh, it doesn't get hot anymore. It used to get, my doghouse used to get so hot that I couldn't even put my leg near it. And now it's just warm to the touch when I'm driving, which is great. Step vans are funny because they have their quirks. Doghouses are super exposed. The doors are really, really shaky when you're driving. They definitely weren't made to drive for comfort. You definitely have to toy with them and um, kind of make adjustments so that they're more comfortable. My doors rattled like crazy the first time I drove my van, so immediately I knew that I needed to fix that. So I actually put new sealant um, around the doors and uh, around the doghouse as well. The floors in here, we didn't mention the floors, these are engineered hardwood and I, I love it, it's great. It's a super dry product. Um, I got it for a really good deal and um, I, I think I got it for like $2 a square foot. Like I said, I tried to keep my budget as low as possible and it was like off basically the end product from a company from a job that they'd done. So that was really cool. This is the captain's chair. So, um, basically, this was a fire truck, so, and it was from Montreal, so all of the stuff on it is French, and, uh, these buttons here are all French, none of them are functional, um, so I'm gonna be, like I said, taking this out, I'm gonna use all of the original, um, pieces in here, clean them up and stuff like that, things that I do need, um, and put it on the dash. I get about... Surprisingly, I get about 12 to 15 miles to the gallon, um, which I had to do the math on because we don't do miles in Canada. And the reason that I'm, I think I'm getting such good mileage is because this is a three ton vehicle and I only have a thousand pounds in it. So it's only one ton currently. I had it weighed when we came across the border and it was like 980 something pounds with Molly and I in it and a full supply of wood for our wood stove. 
So that um, definitely was pretty helpful, it seemed, in fuel economy, because um, I can get a pretty good distance on a full tank of gas. I still keep backup jerry cans in the back just in case because I'm always so nervous I'm gonna run out of gas on the road. It's a super comfortable ride. I actually um, should, this chair, um, I had it reupholstered. This is the original seat um, and I actually had it reupholstered and I love it. Um, it's very bright and nice so I can show you it's hiding. <laughs> he did a really nice job on it. I wanted to repurpose it. The chair was in really rough shape. It was black, full of holes. Um, so he put some new cushioning in it as well, which has been great because it's way more comfortable for me to drive now. I usually keep uh, a back support when I'm driving because, uh, which will like push me up a little further on the tra chair because uh, the pedals and the brakes are a little bit far away because this is like a pretty big rig sometimes to drive. Um, but I mean, we've driven nine hours in one day and I've been totally fine wow. by the end of the day. I mean, you're tired. It's a long drive, but <laughs> yeah, it's good. I like it. This is my little janky stereo. It's being held up by an Archie comic book currently. Um, but it's great. I can like have some music and stuff when I'm playing because there was nothing in here. There was no radio or anything in here that the average vehicle has. Just this crusty dash but yeah i think the vehicle was used a lot because it was mostly just generators and um electrical panels inside i think it was used more as like a like a construction vehicle almost for the fire department because it was really rough in here um when i bought the van and i had to gut and strip everything and pull all that stuff out but i was able to resell some of the stuff um which was great i made a little bit of money for the build off of that i love my van <laughs> i love my van a lot i i didn't know how to do any of this when i started um i asked a lot of questions i watched a lot of youtube videos um and like got support from the social social community that is instagram and everything as well um it was really uh, really cool learning experience for me and it was important to me to learn how to do all of that stuff on my own um so that i wasn't that damsel in distress kind of thing uh when i hit the road i wanted to be able to know how to do that i actually had a mechanic friend of mine help me um do all of the mechanical work so i learned how to like change spark plugs, put all new belts on, do a new cap, rotor, and I did all that engine stuff before I left so that if I ran into any troubles, I would know what was going on. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was a really great learning experience too, to know my engine well, I think is really important uh, for people on the road. So, oh, hold on one second. This is my daughter's. This is why I was talking about making things out of everything. <laughs> Uh, it's a guy. She was dancing with him the last BLM land we were at. <laughs> so, uh, I, think, I can't remember if she named him like Doug or something. I think it was Doug. <laughs> so this is my garage. Um, I'm very thankful for it. Uh, it does its thing. Um, the cat door is here. So the cats come through there to use the litter box, which has been the best thing. Um, and I basically just built these shelves back here. I had these wooden crates from my old apartment. Basically just put chains across so that they don't fly all over the place when we're driving. We have our hammocks in here um, for when we're places with trees. The desert's lacking in those, but I love the desert. It's so great. I'd never been to the desert until like two months ago and it just moved me. I thought it was the coolest. So we have like our backpacking chairs that we keep back here as well. Um, I have some leveling blocks so um, I can level the van out if I'm on uneven ground. And yeah, we keep our coats and stuff back here as well. Uh, bike helmets, um, our winter stuff is in those bins. I've got my tools so I can fix my own stuff. And uh, a Christmas tree, cause that's priority, <laughs> you know? You can live tiny and still have a Christmas tree. It doesn't, it's a three foot tree, it's perfect. We had that going for Christmas on some land out, outside of Tucson and it was a desert holiday, it was really cool. Um, lawn, I keep my laundry stuff back here as well. This was a very good decision, <laughs> this garage. And then around the outside of the van, this is actually a huge focal point for a lot of people when they see my vehicle. Um, it does serve a purpose, the wood siding. 
it's, uh, there used to be three huge storage doors on the side and they were actually cracking the fiberglass. So I removed the doors, which were really, really heavy. Um, so I did take away a lot of weight from the three ton that the van is able to carry. I replaced it with cedar siding. This is actual cedar house siding. Uh, my mom stained it for me. Uh, she did a really beautiful job. And yeah, it's, uh, it's like the uh, Woody. Everybody's always like, oh, look at that thing. It's a Woody, that's so cool. It's definitely made it, uh, a target for people to be a like grab it really grabs people's attention I think because it's like red it's white and then it's got the wood on the side I love it it makes it look super homey that's why I did it um, it was really important to me taking Molly on the road full-time to make sure that our living space both inside and outside felt like a home to us uh, so I tried my best to make it really warm and inviting on both the inside and the outside this is the original paint actually because it was kept in the fire hall I think that that's why it's in such good condition. Also, it's fiberglass, so the fiberglass body doesn't obviously rust. Um, it's really, really durable. Another great thing about fiberglass too, if you're looking into purchasing vehicles, it doesn't get super, super hot in the sun and it doesn't get really, really cold. And there's a heck of a lot less moisture with fiberglass because fiberglass was made kind of for the boating and marine industry. So its purpose is like it's, needs to get wet, it's supposed to get wet. <laughs> so yeah, it's been really great. And then I have like little kind of things here that I've just like added and stuff. So I like hang my jacket on the side of the van and yeah, just like quirky little things. Our van's name is Major. I didn't actually properly introduce you to Major. I named him Major after Major Tom from David Bowie's The Space Odyssey. Uh, that song is like very much about like letting go. Um, it's like about a guy who just gets in a ship and takes off. So, and I'm a huge David Bowie fan. I always have been, um, but he slowly became major, like went from major Tom and then all of a sudden was major because he was a major project <laughs> and like consumed four months of my life. Um, this was like the hardest thing I'd ever put myself through and I'm proud of myself for doing it for sure. And he has quite the face actually. I love the front end is very vintage. Um, it's why well, I was really drawn to him when I found him online. Uh, it's, I've always been into like really retro stuff and like things that look like they're from the 50s and 60s. And the second I saw his face online, I was like, that's my guy. <laughs> Thanks for coming to check out my tiny home on wheels. Um, if you guys want to follow our journey, you can find us at, at the step van diary uh, on Instagram. Happy to share the story. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.